welcome to Along the Lanes. I'm Vero and today I'm back in my craft room after a few weeks of pottering around. It's good to be back and it's good to be home and I'm really enjoying the fact that I'm now getting a little bit of time to myself, to my craft room, to knit, to craft, to try new things and to just kind of do it with time to spare and without having to rush, without necessarily having a goal. So it's been a wonderful, relaxing time um, this week and I have got so much lovely crafty stuff to catch up on with you. Um, if you've watched the last episode, I'll link it in the description, um, we were out for a family outing for the weekend, so it was my sister-in-law's 40th birthday. It was a really fun time, it was great to get away, the house was wonderful and the grounds just stretched forever. I was looking forward to coming back to the craft room so that we could take a look at some crafty stuff, some things I've been working on that I've been looking forward to sharing with you. Crafting wise, I haven't had as much time as I usually like, so I've had to be a little bit selective what I've been working on, but I've got a few new projects I've started and I've dug out some of the oldies but goodies that really, really need to be finished soon. In December, I invited you to vote for your favourite colourway for, or colour combination, I should say, for my um, exploration station. I was attending a Stephen West class in Cambridge. In fact, a huge thank you to everyone who's watched, liked and shared the Stephen West interview that I did during that class. Um, it's now had over 10,000 views, so awesome, thank you. Um, and the colour way... Uh, right way around. Um, the colours that you chose were these kind of uh, gold and copper and silver colourways. So these are all various Skeen Queen yarns and I'm now at the first, second, third, fourth section which is kind of stripes of the copper and the gold and after this I've only got one section left which is using the uh, silvery colour um, which is going to be a chevron edging. So this started in December and I kept losing the bag. I found it behind the sofa, did a few more sections. I'm gonna keep sneezing. Nope, I'm okay. Um, and finally I've done uh, I, I'm one section from the end. So I'm looking forward to finishing this because I think it's going to stretch once blocked is going to be enormous and I think that's a thing you find with a lot of the Stephen West uh, shawls is that they are very much uh, large, very cosy, very kind of wraparound type shawls. They're not little shawlettes. So this is going to be lovely when it's done. Um, as I said, I've got a section and a half or so to do. So provided I not lose it again, it shouldn't be too long. It should be done before the autumn. See, I'm setting my goals realistically here. Friends of mine are having a little, little baby soon, and it's a little baby girl, so I am making them the pop cardigan. And the pop cardigan is by a designer I adore, uh, who I also interviewed recently, uh, Rachel Atkinson. So I'll be adding some cute little buttons. I might get you to help me pick buttons. If you're on Instagram, make sure you follow me because um, I've been having lots of fun asking people to help me pick colours for things uh, when I'm feeling indecisive. I've also been working on my gorgeous, wonderful, bright coloured hedgehog fibres um, socks. So they're just vanilla socks and uh, it's all about the colour. I didn't even want to make anything complicated happen to this pattern because I just wanted the yarn to be the absolute focus. Um, hedgehog fibres just keeps blowing me away with their colourways. They're so fantastic. In fact, if you're a member of the club, look away now. But if you're not, I have to show you the yarn that arrived two weeks ago for this club. Check out these beauties. So it's on a grey base, but there's essentially every colour of the rainbow somewhere in the skein. Um, it goes almost back to white, and it goes some very dark greys, but throughout, um, all the colours are in there. I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk too much about hedgehog fibres because it's becoming increasingly difficult to sign up to their club. Um, the last club sign-ups were at one in the morning UK time. Um, thankfully it was a busy work night for us so I was still up at one in the morning um, and I texted my friend Gemma and she was also awake and awaiting the one o'clock to hit the button. Um, they're not always at crazy times like that but I think the hedgehog fibres team try to make it fair for everyone in the world so they pick 
pick um, times that suit different time zones. Um, this is the Twist Club, and this particular club colorway is called Minx, and I just I just like the fact that their colorways are never standard, they're never expected, they're not necessarily for everyone or they're not necessarily easy to figure out how to use but it's just great, it's art in the skein um, and it means that you can knit something very simple and it'll just have that kind of magic to it anyway. Talking about hedgehog fibres, my latest project is uh, one of Beata's patterns. So Beata is the founder of Hedgehog Fibres and this is called scarfy thing. So interesting name and it literally is just a patchwork of well scraps and I think two main colors. So pick two two full skeins and then grab a bunch of small bits and here I've got kind of bits that I've used in uh, for other things. So the kind of cream here is the one I used for a pair of socks previously. Uh, this I made my ish bell out of. Um, and some are scraps of Collinet, um, which is one of the first yarn companies that I ordered sock weight yarn from. They are or were based in Wales and I received their email a few weeks ago saying that they were closing up shops. So it's a bit of a shame. Not everything they produced was perfect, but I did enjoy their jitterbug yarn. So um, if you've got jitterbug in your stash, uh, take good care of it because um, it's gone now. I don't know if you noticed this little necklace I'm wearing. Um, I just love how it looks. It's a little mini emergency skein in a bottle. These are made by somebody I met while I was in Edinburgh. I met Om during the Edinburgh Yarn Festival and uh, she was lovely and she showed me around Edinburgh a little bit and uh, kind of helped me find my way around. And when I got home I had a look at the little bottles on a necklace that she was selling and I just loved them. So I got one for my friend Kerry's birthday, I got a couple for me, so I've got this teal one. Where's the other one? And I have got this mustard yellow one and she also sent me this absolutely adorable um, two little balls of yarn with a uh, tartan uh, ribbon on it as well as a little stitch marker that's a little blue sheep um, lovely little Scottish sheep here so if you want to have a look at her shop she's on Etsy and she's hand-drawn yarn um, I'll put a link in the description these are just so adorable that I can't wait to use them, but I wanted to show you before they disappear into one of my projects. I was thinking of showing you something else I've made recently, but I realised there's a slight flaw in my plan, in that I have already posted it. So I took part in a podcaster swap uh, themed Christmas in July, organised by Spicy Homemaker on Ravelry, and uh, I posted my parcel a few days ago. I meant to do a little video that I could insert in a few weeks time once my swappies received her present and it's no longer a surprise. And I completely forgot, so it's all been wrapped, it's all been sent and it's on its way to Tracy from the Grocery Girls in Canada. So I suppose you'll just have to watch Tracy's Grocery Girls podcast in order to see what I've sent her. Now here's one whole new craft that I've really been getting into lately. I have been making, let me get an example out, I have been making stamps. So I've been making my own stamps out of this rubbery pink stuff. Um, it's uh, quite reminiscent of um, eraser rubber and apparently you can use erasers and it comes with a little handle into which there are little tools and you first to draw you sketch out your sketch out your ideas on paper and rub them onto the eraser and then just as carefully as you can you cut out either the positive or the negative of it so you either get an outline and you empty everything on the inside of the shape or you 
cut out the outline and leave the inside of the shape. So it either gives you a full shape or an outline. Um, and I've had a lot of fun making these. It reminds me of wood whittling when I was a kid. Um, we all had our, our little Swiss Army knives and you'd grab a piece of wood and you'd sit by the by the bonfire and you would just kind of whittle away into a shape or into a sharp stick to annoy your sisters with, possibly, um, and then you'd chuck it in the fire when you're done. In this case I'm doing something vaguely more productive with them in that I've used them to make cards, I've used them to just send the stamps to friends, and there's something very kind of calm and therapeutic about it. Of course, when you stab yourself in the finger, it's not quite so therapeutic, but it's something I've really enjoyed. As far as learning a new craft and just playing around with it, it's been really good fun. Um, my goal for the next one is to try and try to do layered stamping. So you'll have the shape underneath that's full, and then you'll have a second one that's kind of an outline of it. I'll post some links in the description to some of the um, Instagram artists that, or artists who happen to be on Instagram, I should say, um, who make some amazing ink-based and stamp-based stuff. It's just another rabbit hole for me to go down and uh, I get the impression that once you really get into it, uh, printmaking and stamp making can just become another huge art to learn. Um, but for now I'm having a little bit of fun and I've got enough that I think I'll be able to just spend quite some time making my own stamps. If you've ever tried it and you've got any tips, I welcome your tips because uh, it's fun, I'm enjoying it, but I'm not very competent at it. <laughs> so there you go, new activity. All right, the rain has stopped and I think the wind has come down a little bit, so time to go spray paint some stuff outside. <laughs> outside and the tape didn't stick to the other piece of tape so it all kind of detached itself as I was spraying so there's now turquoise spray on the corkboard itself which is unfortunate because that wasn't the plan however everything can be salvaged it's given me an idea so originally I was torn between these two colors, that's why I asked you for, to help me on Instagram. So uh, turquoise is what I decided to go for, but I kind of still fancied a little bit of the pink. So now, in order to fix my screw up, I'm going to make a stencil out of a card and then use the pink on that. And I think what made me think of that aside from the fact that I'd screwed up, let's face it. A few weeks ago somebody posted a link to a kind of mini survey, just the rubbish everyone posts on Facebook, um, about Rent, the musical, which I saw, when did it come out, in 96 maybe? Um, and it was a quiz on how well do you remember the lyrics. Of course got 100% very quickly, um, and the logo for Rent is one of those spray painted signs with the kind of paint that sprays outside of the stencil itself. So I think I'm just gonna make a lovely stencil in pink, um, probably make or create or something like that. That'll be my way of salvaging. But uh, that's today's lesson. Never do things half-assed. And it definitely is summer outside today. I am roasting. I don't know why I'm wearing, well, not long sleeves, but three quarter sleeves. Might have to fix that. <laughs>
a rather lot easier. I probably should have come into the garage to do the first round earlier, and then it would have been perfect for the first go, but I think I quite like how this has turned out. Just gonna let it dry, then head back in inside and hang it on the wall, and then I can start putting my yarn swatches, the postcards I've received, um, lovely little notes that I wanted to put on the wall, so job nearly done. So what do you know, by the time I finished clearing the garage and bringing the newly decorated cork board in, I got slightly sidetracked by a glass of wine. So it's now Sunday evening and shortly I'm heading off to my absolutely lovely every Sunday night skate. Um, it's one of the routine parts of my week that I really enjoy and it's nice to keep some routine when everything else seems to be uh, going out the window as far as routine goes. Um, I've also finally had a little bit of time to watch some TV and catch up on some of my favourite podcasts. So a few things I've really enjoyed, especially for those of you who also have Netflix. Of course there's the unavoidable, there's Orange is the New Black which is back on uh, Netflix, so we managed to not quite binge it. We've watched it over the course of about, what, two weeks? which is better than usual, where after three days it's all gone. And uh, we've also had a good laugh watching a series called I Zombie. Um, we almost avoided it completely because the the name's not really good, I Zombie. I assumed it was going to be some kind of teenage vampire style thriller, but with zombies instead. Um, but it's quite a funny, funny story. Um, I won't tell you about it. Just go have, go watch the first episode. It'll tell you everything you need to know. As far as YouTube podcasts go, I've had quite a good laugh attempting, very much attempting, to relearn a little bit of Spanish by watching the wonderful Jorge Locatelli, who's also a fantastic designer. Go look up her designs on Ravelry. And her co-host, who's also called Vero. And chatting with them, I discovered that there's an expression in Spanish, certainly in Argentinian Spanish, I don't know if it spreads across all uh, kind of Spanish dialects, um, called tocaya. So tocaya, tocaya is your namesake, let's say, so somebody with who you share a name. And uh, I just thought that was quite a nice expression, I like that. So hello to my tocaya, Vero, and to Jorge, who uh, make a really um, interesting podcast in Spanish for those who are uh, at least a little bit multilingual. Um, I still struggle with it, I have to watch it in like five little minutes bits and then let my brain catch up with it, but it's been good fun. And I have also been uh, watching and stalking uh, Tracy and Jodie from The Grocery Girls. Um, I was doing a swap with Tracy, which I've now posted, and I wanted to get to know them a little bit better since I hadn't watched it that many times. And uh, they're great fun, they make me miss Canada a lot though. Watching it definitely makes me think of home, makes me think. Uh, they remind me a lot of my Aunt Danielle, who I went to Edinburgh with, um, who's just really good fun and, you know, a really good laugh. So do check them out, they're good fun as well. If you've been paying any attention to British politics this week, you'll probably agree with me that it's been a pretty week. So in order to try and brighten things up for my followers on Instagram, I've started doing some little giveaways. So this week was Isolde Teague's birthday. Isolde is one of my absolute favourite designers. She's wonderful. Uh, she's also a very good teacher. So each and every pattern she publishes has some kind of new thing you can learn, improve on your skills, learn something new and you know that's what I love. So I uh, did a little giveaway on Instagram of one of her patterns. So basically choose a pattern and two days later I chose a winner. So don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I think that's probably something that I'll be doing more often. For fun, every so often, if I find a pattern that I fall in love with, I'll probably just do a little giveaway like that. So you can find me on Instagram here. Before I wrap up, I wanted to let you know about two events that are coming up soon, which I'll be attending. So the first one is Fiber East, which is on the 30th and 31st of July, so in roughly a month's time, and that's in Bedford, or very near Bedford. And to date, I know for sure I'll be attending. Uh, Mina from The Knitting Expat will be there, and Katie from Inside Number 23. So we'll have some sort of informal meetup 
uh, I'll have more details closer to the time. But if you're attending, do let us know. We'd all love to meet you. And I think it'll be great to meet a few more people in person. The second event is at the beginning of September. And those who've been watching a while will remember I did a Great London Yarn Crawl in September 2015. And the tickets are now on sale for the Great London Yarn Crawl 2016, which is happening this coming September. I'll put a link in the description and I highly recommend it. It's a very, very cool event. It's very fun. You get to visit a number of yarn shops in a day. Tickets do go quickly, so do go have a look now. Uh, I know that some of the teams have already sold out, so have a look. Really worthwhile attending. It's felt really lovely being back in my craft room, getting a chance to just sit down and play with the various crafty stuff that I've got around, do a little bit of knitting, catching up on my project, catching up with you. Um, however, I have enjoyed taking you out on adventures with me, uh, like last week's episode, and I have numerous other adventures planned. As you can imagine, there's the London Yarn Crawl, there's Fiber East, but there are some other ones that I can't quite yet tell you about. However, if you've enjoyed them, do leave me a thumbs up because it'll let me know you're having fun, you fancy coming along, and we'll have many more fun outings together. So that's it for this week. It's been fun having you around, and I hope to see you on Instagram, on Ravelry, and we'll be back next week with something a little bit special. Bye-bye!